All right, let's begin the Chapter 3 review, exam review material. Problem number 8. It says to write the following in words, and P is equal to I like math, Q is I like science, and we're trying to find P disjunction Q. So whatever P is, I'm going to write, it says I like math. A disjunction, which is what that symbol is, is the word or. So I'm going to write the word or, and then Q is I like science. Period. That's it. Number nine, this sentence isn't going to make any sense, but all I'm looking for is to make sure you understand what the symbols mean um, and how to just replace them. So this symbol is a negation, so that's read not P. So if P is I like math, not P is I don't like math. Well, when you hit the conditional symbol, which is what that is, that's where you put the then, which means I need the if at the beginning. If I don't like math, then, well then what? Well, here's the clause, so we'll put P again, which is I like math. And this symbol is the conjunction symbol, which is and or but, and I'll use and. And then Q, I like science. Period. So if I don't like math, then I like math and I like science. Once again, it doesn't have to make sense. It's just a, a, an exercise in understanding the symbols. Okay, 10. Identify the symbol by its dominance. Okay, remember the dominance order of operations. Biconditional is first. It's the most dominant, followed by the conditional. The conjunction and disjunction, or and or or, they have the same level of dominance. Um, it just depends on the parentheses with that. And then the last one would be the negation. And just like in any math order of operations, which is what this is, if you want to change the order of operations, you use parentheses. For logic, anything on the outside of parentheses is more dominant than anything on the inside. So number 10 has no parentheses, so we look to this chart and that what has more dominance between the negation and the conditional would be the conditional. And you can either just write the symbol or you can write the word. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Number 11, it does have parentheses. Notice we have a conjunction and a disjunction. They have the same level of dominance. So I have to have parentheses so I can identify which one is more dominant than the other, which one I want to be more dominant in this particular instance. So remember, anything on the outside is more dominant. So here, it's the conjunction that is most dominant. And number 12, again, we do have parentheses. Um, if we look on the outside of parentheses, the only two symbols are the negation and the biconditional. The biconditional is more dominant than the negation, so it is a biconditional. Okay, number 13, let's construct a truth table. Be sure to put a rectangle and label the final answer. And if you don't do that, you will lose some points on the final. All right, so the final answer is the most dominant. And as we just finished with 10 through 12, the most dominant is going to be the symbol, uh, the operator on the outside of parentheses, in this case, the disjunction. So I'm going to box it, and I'm going to label it as the final. Remember that doing that now separates your truth table into two halves. This is the left side of the final. This is the right side of the final. So I'm going to now number the left side of the final um, in order of dominance. So the least dominant would be column P. Then not Q is handled as a single column. That would be column 2. And then the most dominant on the left side is the last thing we do on the left, and that would be the conjunction. So you finished labeling the left side, move to the right side of the final. There is only one thing there, so it is going to be the fourth thing we do, or column four. And then, of course, the final will be the last thing we do, column five. And, of course, to find, to evaluate for column five, you look at the last two things you did on either side, meaning the most dominant on the left of the final and the most dominant on the right. In this problem, that would be column three and four. 
All right, so once you've done that, that's your plan. Once you have created your plan, it's just a matter of filling it in and knowing those rules. Okay, so column one says P. Well, P is true, true, false, false. Column two is not Q. Well, Q is true, false, true, false, so not Q is the opposite of that, making that false, true, false, true. It helps for these if you use different color pens or pencils, so I'm going to change pen colors, and now I'm going to sing my first song. Remember, this is the conjunction, so the conjunction song, if you recall, the key to knowing that is true and true is true, all else is false. So I look for any true and trues, and I see that here in row two I have a true and true, so all else are false. So the rest of these would be false. And you finished the left side of, the, of this final, so you'll move to the right side. Well, the right side only has Q in column four, so Q is true, false, true, false. Now I'm going to look at the two blue columns. The last thing I did on the left of the final, the last thing I did on the right side of the final, and compare it to get the final. Well, time to sing another song. The disjunction song is false or false is false, all else is true. So what I'm going to do is look with the blue columns. Do you see any false or falses? Well, here in row four is false or false, so that would be false. There are no other false or falses, so the other columns would be true. Okay, number 14, we're going to create the truth table again. Uh, here I have the plan already um, written out for you. Recall that the most dominant here would be the biconditional. It is the only operation on the outside of parentheses. And now I'm going to number the left side from least dominant to most dominant. So one, two, three, the most dominant is the disjunction. On the right side, four, five, six, the most dominant is the conjunction. And to evaluate column seven, the final, we look at the most dominant on either side of the final, so looking at columns three and six. All right, so now let's just fill it in. Column Q is true, false, true, false. Column P is true, true, false, false. And you want to sing your song. This is the OR song, the disjunction, so false or false is false, all else is true. Here's my false or false, the rest are true. And now we'll move over to the right side. We've completed the left side of the final. So column four is Q, true, false, true, false. Column five is P, true, true, false, false. And ready to sing your song, the and song, if you recall, is true and true is true, all else is false. You'll see that row one is true and true, all else are false. And then finally, we'll evaluate the final column, the biconditional song. It doesn't really have a song, but when they're both true, it's true. Or when they're both false, it's true. If it, they're not the same, then all else are false. Okay, so when I look at the two blue columns, I see that the first row, they're both equal, they're both true and true, so that's going to be true. In the second row, they're not equal, one's true, one's false, so that's false. Third row, not equal, so that's false. Fourth row, they are equal, that's true. And that's the truth table.